Um, last class period, since we kind of ran out of time, all I wanted you guys to do was pretty much create um, S of K and then or prove S of 1 and then, and then show S of K plus 1. All right, and um, now what we're going to do is kind of finish off the induction process. All right, so again, ladies and gentlemen, what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that this sum formula is going to work. And you can see we have a couple of terms, and then the next subsequent, subsequent term is going to be 2n. But the sum is written by n plus n times n plus 1. And we want to prove that this is going to be true for every single term. All right? So the first thing we do is we prove it does this work for the first term. Because if it doesn't work for the first term, it's going to be a little difficult to prove that it works for every other term. So let's go ahead and prove the first term. So we say s of n equals 1 times 1 plus 1. Well, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 equals 2. Is that a sum of our first term? Yeah. Right? Remember, we're trying to find the sum. So that's the sum of our first term. So it works for the first term. So now what we're going to do by using the proof by induction, if we can prove it's true for one variable, then we know that it can also be true for another variable, right? x, y, k, t, right? If we can prove that's going to be true for one variable. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, let's prove that's going to be true for s, k. So we'll say the sum of s, k is going to be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus dot, 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 2k equals k times k plus 1. All right, so in reality, ladies and gentlemen, all we're really doing is taking our formula and rewriting it with k. All right? Yes. But what we're doing is we're proving it for k, so therefore then we'll know that it's also going to prove for our n. Now what I'd like you, now what we're trying to show all right. If it's true for our k term, all right, plus the next term in the sequence, you guys understand that this sequence goes on and on and on forever, right? So if I have 2k, what would be the next term after 2k? 2k plus 1, right? So what we want to do then is say that, all right, I want it also to be true for 2k plus 1 equals. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus dot, 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 2k plus 1 equals k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. All right, so what I simply did is I took k plus 1 and I plugged it in where there was a k. That's all I simply did right now, OK? I plugged in k plus 1 in for k, OK? So to prove by induction, to prove that this works, not just for these numbers, but this sum works for every single one of my numbers, what I'm going to have to show is that sk plus a k plus 1 is equal to sk plus 1. Okay. So to prove that this is going to work for every single one of my terms, we need to prove that sk plus ak plus 1 equals sk plus 1. And let me go and explain again. So the sum of our term plus 1 is right here. This is sk plus 1. This is what, this is what the sum of k plus 1 equals, right? This is your sum of your k plus 1 equals. Then the sum of k is right here, right? Remember how we talked about here's the sum of the variable? But if we know the sum of k is right here plus whatever the next number that's going to happen, so you have the sum of k plus your next term, that has to equal the sum of k plus 1. All right, so let's go and see if this works. So what we look at is we say, what's sk? This is our sum of sk, right? So all you did was when you plugged in k in for n, that's your sum of sk. So we say k times k plus 1 plus what is a k of 1? Well, if you look at, here's s of k plus 1. It goes this number, this number, this number, dot, 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 to k to 2 times k plus 1. So this would be your next term. So this is your a of k plus 1. That's the next term in the sequence. So that's going to be written as 2 times k plus 1. So the sum of k plus a cut plus 1 has to equal the sum of k plus 1. Well, what does the sum of k plus 1 equal? It's right here. This is s of k plus 1. And if we can prove that the sum of k plus 
our next subsequence term, a k plus 1, is equal to s of k plus 1, then we know that it's going to be true for all our values. Um, so therefore, that equals k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. All right? Now, now we need to do some algebra. We need to show this is equal to this. All right? There's a couple ways you guys, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could simply multiply this out, right? We could we could f distribute a property of these. Um, the other way we could look at this is we also could say, can I factor out a k plus 1 in both of these? Yes. So if I factor out a k plus 1, I'm left with k plus 1 times k plus 2 equals. Here, I can just say, well, k plus 1 plus 1 is k plus 1 times k plus 2. Are these equivalent to each other? Yes? Therefore, what we had now just done is prove by induction that this sum formula, since it works for k and k plus 1, it's also going to work for n. So therefore, this is going to hold true not just for the first set of numbers. This is going to hold true for all set of numbers for n. All right? How did you make that You just said you could factor it out. I factored it out. Yeah. Factored them out. I divided them out. I divided both terms by k plus 1. It's the same thing as this, guys. kx plus 2x. You factor out the x. Yeah? Yeah. Same thing. It's just a binomial expression. The other side. Oh. And here I just added 1 plus 1 to give me 2. Because it's not multiplying. So you can just add those up. OK? Kind of.